Hello and welcome to News Now on iBrand TV. My name is Bennett Joseph and here are the stories we're reporting at this hour. The Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Abuba Kamalami, has said that President Muhammad Buhari was tolerant of the excesses of ENSA's protesters in the country back in October 2020. According to the AGF, he added that the actions of the President is proof of his leniency over what he describes as human rights violations. Mr. Malami said this on Wednesday while addressing a number of issues from the government's reaction to the NSAS protest to the appointment of new service chiefs, the extension of the appointment of the Inspector General of Police, among other issues. Meanwhile, the AGF also reacted to the court order on the Central Bank of Nigeria to unfreeze bank accounts of NSAS advocates. He explained that the law provides the federal government with other options which include the right to challenge or exercise further considerations on the matter if the need arises. A federal high court in Abuja had earlier on Wednesday ordered the CBN to unfreeze the bank accounts of 20 NSAS advocates. Meanwhile, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, has asked the Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN, to stay clear of politics. Mr. Falano's call was made in reaction to the unfreezing of bank accounts belonging to 20 NSAS advocates following the NSAS protest in October 2020. The CBN obtained an injunction from the courts to freeze the accounts of certain individuals and a public affairs company linked to the NSAS protest, a move which Mr. Falano describes as a case of intimidation. The human rights lawyer who was a guest on Channel's television Sunrise Daily argued that the Apex Bank went out of its way. Meanwhile, the national chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, on Wednesday charged security agencies to maintain the professionalism they displayed during the governorship elections in Edo and Undo states held on September the 19th and October 10, 2020. Mr. Yakubu said that the efforts should also be replicated during the Anambra governorship election as well as the 2023 general election. He gave the charge during an interagency consultative committee on election security meeting in Abuja. And in business, members of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria on Wednesday disrupted loading of petroleum products at private depot in Apapa as well as Ibadan, Ejibo and Mosimi Depot belonging to Nigerian Petroleum Corporation. Reports gathered that the marketers self-possessed the facilities to protest their inability to get products due to a new payment method introduced by the Petroleum Products Marketing Company, a subsidiary of the NNPC. The Chairman Independent Petroleum Marketers Association for ORE, Mr. Shino Amo, confirmed the development in an interview with journalists. He said the members of the association blocked the depot with tankers to protest the new payment method. He explained that with the new arrangements, major marketers and very few independent marketers with huge fronts would pay for 200 trucks and load them, while those who had paid for one or two trucks would be on queue for many months unattended too. And the Emirates Airlines has suspended flights from Nigeria to Dubai for two weeks until February 28, 2021. It said travelers from both Abuja and Lagos would not be accepted for travel prior to the date, according to a statement issued by the airline on Wednesday. Also, the carrier warned that passengers who have been or connected through Nigeria in the last 14 days would not be allowed entry into the United Arab Emirates, whether terminating in or connecting through Dubai. Emirates noted that flights from Dubai to Lagos and Abuja would continue to the normal schedule as it urged travelers to contact the airline's customer center or their booking agents in terms of rescheduling. And still in business, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization representative in Nigeria, Mr. Fred Kafiro, has said an estimated 9.2 million Nigerians from 16 states and the Federal Capital Territory face food insecurity he also said that the current food system in the country needed a re-evaluation. Mr. Kafiro said this speaking during a webinar organized by the federal government and the United Nations for journalists on Nigeria National Food Systems Dialogue. Part of the aim of the webinar was to lay the foundation for a series of dialogues across the country to chart pathways towards ensuring resilience. 
inclusive and sustainable food systems in Nigeria by 2030. And on the foreign scene, impeachment prosecutors are expected to wrap up their case against ex-president Donald Trump in the US Senate this week, backed by a disturbing footage that showed senior politicians fleeing for their lives during the last month's assault on Congress. The Democratic impeachment managers will argue for a second day that the riot was deliberately incited by the former president with an aim of reminding senators and watching Americans just how bad things got on the 6th of January. And in Ghana, Ghana's parliament has shut down for at least three weeks over a surge in cases of COVID-19 among lawmakers and parliamentary staff. The Speaker of the House announced that the legislature will be on recess until the 2nd of March to make way for disinfecting and sanitizing of the premises. At least 17 members of parliament and 151 supporting staff have been infected with the coronavirus, which had already forced lawmakers to limit their assembly consultations. And in sports, Nigeria's Kelechi here in the struck deep into stoppage time to send Leicester City into the FA Cup quarterfinals with a 1-0 victory over Brighton on Wednesday night. They were joined in the last eight by Premier League's bottom club, Sheffield United, who beat championship side Bristol by a long goal. And that wraps it up for us on News Now on iBrand TV. For more news stories, do visit our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and follow all of our social media platforms. I am Bennett Joseph and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.